Hi everyone, welcome to the Six Steps to a Better Business webinar. I'm Jamie, Jamie Gorell from Action Coach Business Coaching. I grew up a business owner, parents. My mum had a hairdressing salon and my dad had a business that, had, that sold cots, trams and buggies. When you grow up and you hear the problems, the issues and the successes in both households, something sticks with you. Gives you a passion for business. Also gives you a passion because you want to help your parents more. And you don't know how. By the time you know, it's too late. But it was for me. So I spent the last 15 years helping SMEs grow. Thoroughly enjoying it. Think about it all the time. And it's the only thing I really want to do on a professional basis. So that passion, what does it lead to? It leads to helping lots of businesses. Very kind of Mark to talk about uh, how I've transformed business to the largest online business directory in the UK. Thanks Gary for talking about our time together transforming a business from multi-million losses to profits and thanks very much Ava. Uh, Love the journey with you for the 190% growth that we experienced last year. And some others as well, Prashant with his 100% growth in two months and Richard, Michelle, Sang and, and Irving kindly sharing their stories. If you help other people, as a result, your business grows as well. I'm sure you've had the same. Due to the stories that you just see, the men I was the fastest growing action coach in the UK. Now is that out of 108 coaches? And being recognised in the action coach community actually helped me be recognised in the franchise community alone. In, in the April 2016 issue, I'm actually on the front cover. I like the story that, that on my journey in the last few years were helping local business owners. So how can this help you? What, uh, what is this six steps to a better business and, and, and how can this help you get to where you want to go through your business? Well, I'm going to start with a, a, a thought. Imagine you call your office and you say, I'm going away for six months. There's not going to be internet or phone access. I'll see you when I get back. What's your thoughts on this particular request? Type things in your question boxes. Thank you, Jonah. It's impossible. Mohammed's telling me it's scary. Phil's saying, am I mad? You might be right, Phil. And John saying, show us how. That's what I'm going to show you. It's a journey where this is this is what can happen. And it's not only from what I've learned, it's also from my action coach colleagues. Between, between us, there's 1,100 of us. We've helped over 100,000 SME businesses grow over the last 20 years. Most people don't make the journey for a business worth without you. They just enjoy the profit, growth, and the less hours to spend time with their family. So I hope you take one or two things from this webinar to help you Make more money, work less hours, or fix an area of your business that is niggling you. So if you did have this business that works without you, what would you do with it? Many people have different dreams and goals. Are you someone that would like to be on a desert island? Are you someone that would just want to pay more golf? Would you just want to spend more time with your family on holiday? Have you got that in an entrepreneur niche and actually you actually want to do you want to use extra time to start more businesses. Would you buy a really big house? Have you got that travel bug? You just want to see more places. There's one thought though to help you with this with this webinar. The principles today use the thought process that that Richard Branson does. If you can learn to run one business successfully, then there's no reason why you can't run any number of businesses at the same time. The principles are the same. So let's look at these six steps. The first one's mastery. It's taking people from chaos to control. Have you ever met a business owner and every week there's fires and there's problems? There's an issue with a customer, issue with staff, certain things don't work, etc., etc. These people have weaknesses in mastery. And once you go through them and you improve them, you realise that your plan week 
in 90 95% of cases is your, is your actual week. How good would that be? Let me move on to niche. Niche is your sales and marketing to grow your profits. Then we've got leverage. Leverage is systemization. Once you've got profitable business, you can work out actually there's certain things we can do with less. Use technology to speed things up. Or just have better processes. A lot of people are moving to accounting packages like Xero and purchase invoice applications like Receipt Bank, which basically means that paper goes and we can automate a lot of the things that we've been doing manually for years. That's a great example of leverage. Once we've got great systems, we can hire a team. Because then we know we're efficient and we're only hiring the, the, right, the, the right people for the right jobs and not, and not having too much of a big headcount. And then we've got synergy, where we've got, we've got a well organized machine. And then we have results. After you've got synergy, you've got one unit working well, and then you and then you expand. You could have you could grow by adding corporate stores, like one of my clients is doing, or you could franchise. So let's look at the first step. The first step is mastery. The four elements: destination time, financial, and delivery. We're going to look at each one in turn. Destination mastery. Who's, who's happy to tell me why Stephen Covey is related to destination mastery? Any question boxes? Thanks, Jack. Yes. He wrote the seven habits of highly effective people. And habit number two is begin with the end in mind. Let's look at an example of why this is important. So it's an area where lots of people struggle. Bill Gates is a great example. In the 70s, he said, there'll be a PC in every home. Does anyone remember the, PC, the computers in the 70s? Well, let me show you. That's what they look like. So imagine Bill telling you that there'll be one of those on, in every home. What reaction do you think he got? Thanks, Jack. Yes, risical. Thanks, Phil. Really good point, Phil. Phil's sharing with us that IBM, who were the leaders in computers at the time, actually told him it wouldn't happen. So imagine you've got this dream of a computer in every home. The leader of the industry is telling you that it's not going to happen. The machines cost about £10,000. You need a computer science degree to work them. What do you think happens to you? Lots of people tell you you're mad. But if your passion is strong enough, you keep going. What do you think Bill's got there? Well, I think he has. What's important to you? How do you make sure you get it? When Bill was in the 70s, this wasn't realistic. He didn't know how to do it. He just wanted it. So he spent his entire journey working out how to do it and make sure it happened. So what's the, what's the first stage of getting your dreams on track? It's actually writing it down. Writing down what they are. And here's an example of, of some proof of that, why that really, really works. There's a study done at Harvest Business School. And they tracked the performance of one class for 10 years. And what they, what they, what they found astounded quite a few people. The top 3% had 10 times the wealth of the rest of the class. And the trend was, they wrote down what they wanted. It wasn't necessarily they were the most academically bright. You got the clarity, you got the determination, like Bill, you'll go a lot further. Have you got anything written down? Have you actually thought about what you really want? Or are you just living day to day? Or just even year to year? But what's the end game for you? So that's, so that's delivery mastery. If you've got a piece of paper, maybe give yourself a mark out of 10. If you've got a low score, don't worry, it gives you a lot of scope for improvement. And if you do get that clear, you'll see results improving quite dramatically. And also, once you've got that vision, why don't you share it with your team? I'll get your team to help you with it. You'll see a massive difference in the motivation of your staff members. So let's move on to the next one, time mastery. Again, I'll refer to Stephen R. Covey. Stephen R. Covey studied the 
what, what the most effective people in the world did. And he divided the way they spend their time into four. The first one is tasks that are not urgent, not important. You have found yourself or two, getting carried away by Facebook. Or maybe over an employee who you left alone actually performed better. These kind of things are described as not urgent and important. You didn't do them, things move better. You end up being distracted. Next thing is urgent, not important. You ever had the phone ring and you asked to answer it? It's, it's, it's the third cold call of the morning on PPI insurance. Urgent, the phone ringing. If you, you fell after your answer because it's annoying you. It's making noise in the office. Not important. You're glad you didn't do it. You, you know, you, you, wish you, you wish you would have not done it. Anything that you're doing that's, that's urgent, not important. So what's the third section? Third section are things that are urgent and important. So imagine your top salesperson leave. You have to spend time recruiting them. Otherwise, there's a big hole in your, in your sales funnel. You're probably having to do more selling yourself. What we find with these areas is they're preventable. Because you're not doing the not urgent but important areas, the zone, the thing we'll get to next, it's causing urgent, important things to happen. So going back to the example of the, of the sales team, imagine that you saw that your, your team was too small and you, and you started recruiting. You planned it nine months in advance. Now it's going to take three, three months to, to find the right person and three months for them to, to send it in. Um, and then a three-month buffer for any delays in either process. Also, if you would be training your team and motivating them and, and getting them to buy into what you're doing and, and listening to their opinions, the person might have left in the first place. So what not urgent but important things are you doing that's minimising the urgent and important tasks, the fires that keep happening? So have a little think about time mastery. And give yourself the mark out of 10. 10 is... Your plan week is your actual week. You're really thinking ahead. And also, you're doing things like spending at least five hours a week on business development activities if business growth is one of your activities. Also, you're making sure that um, anything that you're doing that you could pay someone the minimum wage to do, they're doing and not you to free yourself up with more high-level tasks. Give yourself a mark out of 10. Let's look at financial mastery. Have you got a business dashboard? Let's use an analogy of this to the car, like the petrol gauge and all the dashboard in the cars as well. So imagine if you didn't look at the business dashboard and you were driving, what would happen? Thanks, John. Yes, you run out of fuel and you'd be stuck in the middle, could be stuck in the middle of a country lane. Thanks, John. What analogy is that to business? Thanks, Phil. Running out of cash. You don't do cash flow forecasting. You could run out of cash. There's only so much you can keep in your head. And if you're only relying on historic information, certain changes are going to you're gonna hit you before you're aware of them. What else? Thanks, Phil. Yes, the oil gauge. That can relate to speaking to employees regularly to find out what the issues and opportunities are for them and the business before, before they before they become too late. Love the energy field to oil. So look, one example of this is KPIs. Have you got KPIs in your business that help, helps you with this, helps you spot issues and opportunities very early so you can exploit the opportunities to grow profits or minimize the issues that, that hold you back and create hurdles? Let's look at an example of a, of a dashboard. So the, We've got this made up business, online marketing business. They, they sell directory listings and websites and search engine optimization and pay-per-click. So what's happening about this business? As you can see, the sales are growing. 351,398,000 pounds. Gross profit's is going down. Why could that be? Could it be that people are discounting more than you'd like them to? Could it be that some lower margin profits are being sold more July and August than they were in June. Let's, let's dig a bit deeper. How are we getting this business? This business, this business seems to be winning through cold calling. We're making less cold calls as the months go by. 
that the sales reps have gone down for 2016. So does that mean that sale, the bad sales reps have left? Or maybe they're just on holiday. It is June, July and August. The cold call for reps is going up from 2000 to 2,121. So that's almost, almost reinforcing that maybe some bad people are away or they've left. Conversion rates going up. And overall sales with less reps is going down. So this business is, is improving the last three months. Let's look further. They're, they're doing some new business, but actually, what are people are people renewing with them? Well, notice that value renewals are going up each month. And we're getting better. We're going to 45% conversion to 48% conversion, conversion over those three months. But that's still less than 50%. So most people aren't renewing. But as it's improving, is that telling us that maybe there's a problem that we fix it? So this is the, the KPIs that relate to the financial side of the business and how we win business and how we get leads. What about the other areas of the business? Let's look at the operations. Let's look at the staff. Are they happy? Well, there's attrition here. There's 5% in sales. We've gone 5% 5, 5 in, in June to 10% in Ju July and August. For attrition. So 1 in 10 people who exist are leaving. But from what we've seen, there's some bad... The, the result's getting better. So does that mean that we're actually maybe getting rid of some staff? Maybe the bad ones. So maybe that would be positive attrition. What about the other departments? The people are actually staying. Staff satisfaction surveys can be really, really good, providing they're also um, complemented by regular staff one-to-one -one meetings to find out what, they, what they'll say face-to-face -to -face as well as writing on the form. We can see the satisfaction's going up. Sales seems to be gone up, so maybe it was some bad people that are left. And all the other departments need to be on the up. So it looks like that the people remaining are quite happy and we've actually got some bad apples. What about customer service? How does this staff issue reflect in the customer experience? We can see that people are calling us less, we're spending a bit more time on the phone, so maybe we're servicing people better. We're responding to emails quicker, albeit 35 hours is, is still pretty pretty poor. Anything anything um, higher than 24, you, you could be said to be not the greatest, best service there is, and people are complaining less. So there's like this company is going through some transition to the better. Maybe it was in a bad place to start. And you go to their website, quite a lot of number of visitors. But as we can see, um, there's a variance between how long people spend on the, on the site and the number, and, but the pages that people view are going up. I mean, what, what could be causing this? Well, every time the site could, could be how engaging the site is. A number of pages will see if there's, if there's links to what people are looking for and, um, and how long it takes them to get there and how engaging and how good is the customer experience. Quite a lot to look in this business. So imagine having a meeting with these KPIs every month. What action plan would you produce? What further investigation would you do that can uncover some issues and opportunities to help this business grow? Have you got this? Have you also got a monthly P&L and balance sheet that you look at every month to help you make decisions? Have you also got a cash flow forecast that will tell you what the bank balance is in 90 days? If you've got all those things and you're quite scoring quite high in financial mastery, if not, you're scoring quite low. Give yourself a mark out of 10 help you tell you what actually you need to be doing. Let's go to delivery mastery. How do you know what you're selling is delivered as you want it to every time? What process have you got for customer feedback, knowing exactly what they're feeling, even when it's difficult for them to tell, for them to tell you? A lot of business owners I speak to say, I know they're happy because they don't complain. You ever been to a restaurant, didn't like the food, in a bit of a rush, didn't complain. Do they know your experience? Do they assume you're happy because you didn't complain? I met with a removal business a few years ago and uh, I asked him this question about what his process was for delivery mastery. And um, he, he really impressed me with his answer. He told me, see those 10 files on, on the shelf? Every time one of my guys goes to a job and they bring back the form, there's, um, there's a comment section, there's some marks out of 10. And they know that um, they'll, they'll get a reward for, for some good feedback. I also know their handwriting and their wives just to, just to maximise the chance that nothing underhand's going on. But that wasn't enough for him. He still called the, the customers two weeks later because he knows breakages could be spotted after delivery. 
He was absolutely passionate about customer service. He wanted to show every single person was happy. How does your process? Are you as sorry as he is? Give yourself a mark out of 10 for delivery mastery. How much work do you have to do on this area? So that covers mastery. It gives you a half, and, and getting this right, it gives you give yourself enough foundations to healthy growth. So what's next? Niche. Niche is about growing profits. So let's, let's get a bit more detail about how we can grow profits and spot the, the areas of, of, of where we can do that best we can. What equation at Action Coach that helps us really give a top level view of, of growing profits? Call it the five ways. Everyone, everyone wants the things in red. We want more customers. We want more revenues. We want more profits. But what are the levers that get them? But to get customers, you need leads and you need to convert well. And to maximize the revenues of those customers, you want them coming back and you want them spending more. And to convert so that those, those revenues to group profits, you need to have a decent margin. Let's put some numbers in to, to help show how we can go from where we are now to, to somewhere, something a bit better. And the impact of, of changing a few things incrementally to see what the overall impact is. So let's imagine you've got this business here. We've got 4,000 leads. And what we're going to do, we're going to increase each item by 10%. So you've got 1,000 leads, that's give you 4,400. What can you do to do that? Well, firstly, you could introduce a new strategy. Have you got a referral strategy? You saw in the earlier slide, I've had the privilege of working with a co-founder of Love Film. One of the ways they got to a million subscribers before the other DVD rented by post businesses about 10 years ago was by having a, a really good referral strategy. They said, if you refer a friend, we'll give you a free month, so will they. So we had a really nice conversation. They rang up a friend, told about the film they saw, and just say they could have the same experience and they'd benefit too. People love doing it. Have you got a referral strategy where people remember you and actually want to refer you and they know how? Also, you're taking advantage of online marketing. If you looked at Google AdWords, if you looked at Facebook ads and the impact it's having on the online marketing business with the ease of, of tracking and, uh, and, test, and being able to test results, many types of results, and track and show different ads at different times. So you can know exactly what picture works, what headline works very, very quickly. You're using some traditional forms of marketing. See lumpy mail pot work really well in, in certain large businesses where you send something very interesting through the post and do a, do a follow-up call. It gets a conversation where otherwise you probably wouldn't got a conversation. What other areas of could you increase leads? If you've got something that's working well that you might have not done for a while, start it again. You could even just call, call some customers you've not spoken to for a few months, find out how they're doing and just understand the get an update from them and, and there might be some areas which you can help them with which you couldn't before so that's leads we do all those things you think we can increase it 10% in this business so that's like a conversion rate let's imagine we go from 25% to 27.5% what could we do to do that we could train the sales team I have a lot of success with one of my clients where we um, we shared what the best salesperson was doing with everyone else. Had some uh, cool recordings and we, sh we shared the cool recordings. And people 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 learn that if there was one, if there was about ten things to learn, everyone learned one or two things, which helped their conversion rate go up in future weeks. The company grew their profits and the sales reps grew their commission, so it also helps with staff satisfaction as well. Also, the top salesman feels really good because he's the person that is the star of the week. Just measuring your conversion rate can increase it. And if staff are aware of it in your one-to-one -one meetings, then they know to focus on it. And also, you can work with them on making it better. What gets measured gets better. So we just increase those two things by 10%. We end up with 
21% more customers, here from 1,000 to 1,210. So how can we get the most revenues from the customers by giving the most value to them? Well, actually, can we get them coming back more often? I said before, calling customers every so often to keep in touch and, and, and build that relationship. Also, all your customers are aware of all your products. How many accounting firms out there have, um, have clients that they do their accounts but didn't know they had a payroll department, didn't know they had a corporate didn't know they had a um, corporate finance department. How many law firms that maybe do litigation have never asked their clients did they need their, their will updating? Some people think it's obvious, but some people don't always obviously associate you with the service you're not offering. And just keeping in touch with people can really help open that door. So do you think if we did some of those things, we can increase the average transaction from 2.2 2 here, 10%? Average pound sale, how can we increase that? What's the easiest way of doing that? We increase our prices. The thing that business owners are scared of, more than the customers and more than the staff. One of my clients increased their prices. And the action they got when they, they, they spoke to staff and customers actually startled them. The customer said about time, as did the staff. They actually felt they were being valued more because the prices went up. The business owner still had a lot of fear and did it. And guess what happened? Their turnover went up. Did they lose some customers? Yes, the ones they wanted to lose. Everyone won. And the customers they lost were probably going to a competitor that actually might have been a bit more suited to them, probably not exactly in the, in the target market that my client was in. So if we do all those things, what happens to our turnover? Well, in this business, we go from 200,000 to 292,820. It's quite a big jump. 46%. What could you do with a 46% increase in your revenue? Is anything here we've said unrealistic? Is anything here we said costs lots of money? It's amazing how some small increments can have a dramatic effect. Let's see what we can do with the margin. We increase the margin from 25% to so 27.5%, what can we do? But have you ever given your, your P&L to a bookkeeper and say, just come up with some ways to not 10% of that? Have you had your utility bills reviewed? Have you called in one of the cost reduction agencies to just have a, have a top level view of, of, of all your costs and anything they can do with the deals they have? When's the last time you challenged your rates? When's the last time you looked at your headcount and say, actually, do we need everyone here? Um, and is everyone being really efficient? If you did some of those things, could you increase your margin by 10%? If you did, what happened to your profits with all these, all these increments? Profits go from 50,000 here to 80,525.50p. So what's that mean? That's a 46% increase in revenue, as we just said, and the profits are 61%. What could you do with a 61% increase in your profits? Would you be here? Would you be playing more golf? Would you be able to invest in your systems a bit more and hire the team that could actually free up some time for you to do those things we looked at on, early on in, in, in the webinar? Is anything we've seen really difficult? How much is this you're doing? There's probably quite a lot of these things you know anyway, but some people just need a reminder. Also get themselves focused. So I've covered, I've covered the six steps briefly and, and the first two in a lot more detail. And I've got a question for you. If you want to grow your business and you see some things here that you need to do to help you, have you got everything in place to do this? Can you do this on your own or with the people you've got at the moment? Do you have the marketing skills, the sales skills, the finance skills? Have you got someone that's making you accountable to maybe do things that are a bit uncomfortable that will help you get to where you want to go to, but it's stopping you doing it. It's maybe some procrastination settling in. Have you got anything you need to get there, or is there something missing? If there's nothing missing, and you've got things you want, you've got some great for this webinar, fantastic. 
love to hear from you to see what you learned today has, has helped you and how it's helped you and really make, make me smile. But if there is something missing, what can you do? Contact me. I'd like you to contact me for a number of reasons. Number one, I'd like your feedback from this, this, this webinar. Um, it's part of my delivery mastery. I don't know what you think. I'd love to know. And I'd love it if you just spend a few minutes just typing me an email to jeremygrayactioncoach.com. If you feel actually you might need some help getting there, doesn't mean to say we'll work together, but let's start with a 15-minute call. I can't work with everyone. I'm not someone that can help everyone. A 15-minute call is almost the first step in exploring. So we'll do this 15-minute call. Well, firstly, it might be a topic I didn't cover, but I'll happily help you on a call. Even if the call ends there, it's fine. I love helping people and being a spark to my face. You might want a bit more detail there I covered. We did a little bit of sales and marketing, a bit of mastery, but there might be one particular area that's really relevant to you and it would really help you having a second opinion on something. You might just have a business challenge somewhere. You just, just want a, an opinion on that. Or just a general second opinion on your overall situation. A lot of my clients are doing really, really well. I've got some couple of them that are on the leads in the U, U, UK and what they do. But one of the reasons they, they, they employ me is they want to be challenged all the time. They want to make sure they're top because they, they know they can't see everything. They also, everyone's blind to their blind spots. The other thing I offer is, is, is a complimentary business health check session. It's where we go through these six steps and really look at every area. From, from an outsider, from also someone outside of your industry, most of the clients I work with are industries I've never been, been to before, but we, but we add value together. So if you're, if you're open-minded and you see value, Send me an email, jeremygrayactioncoach.com. Love to hear from you. If you want a 15-minute chat, let's have one. And if that leads to a, a complimentary health check session, then so be it. And if not, no problem at all. Well, so thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you gain from it. And I look, look, I'm hoping to hear from, from as many of you as possible just to give me some feedback on this webinar or anything else that, that's on offer. Have a great day. Bye.